All right, for our, our second exercise, we were looking at raster images, pixel-based images before with our cartoon jumble. Now we're going to be looking at what are called vector images, which are like cutouts of paper that can be scaled to any resolution. And what we are going to do to attempt this is find an image online that we like the composition of, we like the use of color, the, the use of value, lights and darks, and reduce it, minimize it, using our own layered shapes, like, we're, like we have an X-Acto knife and a packet of multicolored construction paper, and try to construct it, right? No matter how complicated the image is, we have to figure out what's really necessary. So with that in mind, we want to choose an image that we are really inspired by. So it might come from art history. It might come from contemporary art in galleries. It might come from pop culture. This is a, a film still, right? And as long as it's a two-dimensional image that we are simplifying, we are going to be focusing on the same things, which is the, the color, the shape, and then the darkness or lightness of the color and its placement with the others. So I call this a shape-based composition. I like to try to showcase different artists that I like. Uh, this is not a digital artist, though if, if he were doing a lot of illustrations today, he would certainly be doing digital art. He's named Robert Williams. He's known for doing kind of hot rod um, culture art from California, really inspired skater art and surfing art and all kind of counterculture stuff in the 70s. But his work is oil painting on canvas, really large canvases. And even though this is a pretty low res JPEG, you can see all the detail, like all the tattoos on this, this little devil guy on the fast food. And it's very cartoony, right? So this is not made with shapes. In fact, his hamburger is pretty much painted without any outlines. It's all different tones and soft edges and gradations. Like this burger bun has greens in it and purples in it and blues as well as oranges and grays. But I think what really works about his, his composition is that if I squint really hard, and you can do this with your own reference choice, if you squint, you see how it reduces the contrast. So the brightest brights, the darkest darks, and you start to see the big shapes that are making the focal points happen, like the dark figures on the light background. So I'm going to choose this one. So what do I do? It doesn't matter what resolution the image is. I am going to, to right click it and then open with Photoshop. And now we're going to use Photoshop to get to know a little bit about our image and to change its resolution to be print size for us, because we're going to be building up our own tools on top of this image and then erasing the layer with this image <laughs> so that eventually it's only our own shapes that are showing. So in order to learn about the reference we brought in, I have to go to image and image size. So this image is only 72 pixels per inch, which is standard screen resolution, but not at all professional standard for printing which is 300 pixels per inch, and it is not our lab standard, which is 350. Um, right now, the image physical measurements are 27 inches by 23. We are going to resample this image, right? So we are going to increase its number of pixels to something that's closer to 10 megapixels. So I need you to check the resample box. And the first thing you'll do is you'll put in our lab resolution, which is higher than professional standard which is 350. Then I want you to put the width and height to be 9 by 12, or something that's at least 9 by 12. So to do that, because I need to keep the original proportions, right? If I squeeze this to a different rectangle, it will be a different composition. So I want to make sure I have the little chain link here that, that 
makes it so the aspect ratio of the width to the height stays the same no matter how big I make it. But I'm going to resample it so it's 350, and I'm going to check first and see if the width at a width of 12 will give me something bigger than 9, 9 or bigger, and it does. So my, my image, my printable image, will be 12 inches wide, 9.972 inches tall, at 350 pixels per inch. Now when I hit OK, the computer is changing it from being only 9 megabytes to being 42 megabytes, which means the computer is creating an awful lot of pixels, which is not a good thing. So let's see what that looks like. Because this is a raster pixel based image. So what that did is it made every pixel have kind of a whole series of um, extra pixels around it added in, which just make it softer and softer. Does that make sense? But now this is the resolution we want for a final printout. That's fine because I can still clearly see what the image is and I'm not printing it. Instead, I'm going to layer shapes on top of it. So this is our background image. We are not going to use the same tools we used for a cartoon jumble. We are going to use the vector tools within Photoshop. So a vector or what they call shape tools in Photoshop, you'll find underneath the T, um, underneath the text tool, because text is a vector. So find the T and then move down below it to where you see a shape. And then if you hold down with your left click button, you'll see all the shapes in that drawer. And I want to pick the biggest kind of focal point shape to start with. Just like if I were cutting it out of paper, I'd want a big, big shape underneath all the others. But instead of doing the whole rectangle here, I want to find a focal point within the scene. So if I squint, the obvious focal point seems to be this, this big yellow circle. So I'm going to choose the ellipse tool. And I'm going to hold down shift because that will make it so that it, it stays as a perfect circle. Click and drag. You'll see that the shapes are outlined in blue. Roughly place it. Then I can use my arrow keys to move it, or I can use the Move tool to move it right into place. So I've eclipsed it now. But the problem is it's the wrong color. So this is a vector, but it's the wrong color. And you will see that the vector layers have a little vector box with anchors in the corner of the layer preview. So these layers have properties. And these are the, the vector shape properties. And of those properties, one of them is color. And an easy way to get to those properties is just to click on the, the vector shape layer icon. And it will open up the color picker. So this will teach us a lot about picking colors in Photoshop. I can use the, the spectrum scroll here and try to find a yellow that's close. But whenever you have the color picker showing in Photoshop, you can also just select the color from the pixels that are available. You want to pick a color that will match your reference because we're trying to just simplify our reference image into basic shapes, right? And these colors can always be changed very easily. But what we're doing is we are saying this image, which has tons of different yellow pixels, all of a different color, we are picking just one of those colors and applying it to a huge shape that we place. So right now, that's what I've done. <laughs> Next, I want to do a background shape, one that fills the whole rectangle. So I'll pick the rectangle tool. And I will map it across the whole structure. But then I will pick the color that I think represents it. 
But here I can't use the color picker from the image, right? Because my whole image is covered. So now I want you to experiment with what this color picker is and how you can go lighter or darker. You can go less saturated or more saturated. And I'm going to use kind of a dark brown, just kind of an average of the background. Okay, now just like cutouts of paper, they are stacked on top of each other. And it doesn't really make sense if this is on top of my yellow circle. So I want to drag that underneath my yellow circle. Now I have a little bit more work to do, right? Because this isn't quite yet this. So there's going to be a lot of smaller shapes that now go on top. So how do I start doing that? Well, what I want you to do is take your background image, and I want you to make a duplicate of it, which you do by hitting Command-J once you've selected your background layer. Command-J will make a copy. Move that copy to the very top of your shape layers. And then we're going to take its opacity down to about 50%. And then you can turn on your background shapes. And then we are going to lock this layer so that we don't accidentally work on top of it by clicking on the, the little padlock icon above it. Now this just becomes a reference layer for us to look at. And now I can start tackling some of these more complicated shapes. Like what about this softer circle here? Wherever, whatever layer I'm on, when I use the shape tool, it will automatically create a new layer with that shape on top of the layer that I'm currently on. So if I want the layer to show up underneath this yellow circle, but on top of my background, I want to click on my background. Then use the shape tool. I'll use the ellipse tool and make another circle, this time much bigger. That will be kind of my softer brown. And then for its color, I'm going to move my layers out from my properties so it doesn't, I don't have to keep on um, reorganizing it. Better yet, I'll move my properties over here and put my layers back. All right, so now I've created a new shape. And the vector outlines will always show with blue, but that blue isn't really there. It's just a guideline for you. And I can pick the color of that new shape through the color selector. And I want something brighter. All right? So now what do I have? I have this. And I can start building with more complexity using my guideline layer. What's the next big focal point? Before I get into the hamburger and all that stuff, these figures are pretty important. So this is what's called a compound shape. It's going to have more than just one simple shape tool. I want it to be on top of my, my background. I'm going to make a long skinny oval. I can bring that in. Try that again. It won't actually make the layer until it's completed. And this time I'm going to use a color that's not solid black, but definitely cooler and darker. And I can use the Move tool to move it around. But you see how that shape doesn't quite get to the, the shape of that figure. So this is what you can also do to your shape tools. They're still vectors, but just like with your cartoon jumble, you can free transform them. So I can do Command T. I can right click inside and I can start to warp it and make it a more customized shape. I can drop the shoulder and kind of flatten it at the top. I can widen the bottom a little bit narrow it towards the middle, and then stretch the whole thing up, hit return, and now that's my shape. 
and they're still all vector layers. So the challenge is to keep them all vector layers with those little icons.